So, welcome everyone. This microphone is not to uh, strengthen my voice here, just for the uh, online presentation. Welcome to Pitch. Welcome to Pitch University, and more welcome to all of you at the Faculty of Sciences. We are very happy that you are here. Um, According to my calculation, this is not more than the half of you who should be here. That is because of uh, travel, visa, and arriving problems. Uh, we should be around 100. Um, this orientation day is for you uh, at the very first step to put you in the picture, put you in, in the picture concerning page, university, academic studies, and the faculty itself. Um, just briefly about the faculty. This is a faculty called Faculty of Sciences, Nature Sciences, although I guess uh, some of you are not studying nature sciences, but sports sciences or computer sciences. That is an addition to uh, the traditional nature science programs. Uh, we offer a full variety of uh, English programs at three different levels. Bachelor, Master, Doctorate, PhD level. So for the freshman bachelor students, if you have an idea about to study in Pitch for a long run, uh, we offer you nine years, uh, including doctoral studies. It is your decision. You have to work very hard, but that is a perspective for you. Um, there are lots of lots of uh, cultural shocks uh, we are aware of the fact that once you are from Mongolia, from China, from Africa, from Zimbabwe, uh, even from Europe, uh, arriving into a new country called Hungary, uh, that would be a series of shocks, uh, challenges, waiting for you and not waiting for you, just being hidden somewhere, facing to you. Um, this orientation day or program is just to help you to go through that jungle. Uh, this is a jungle, I can tell you. Uh, we have been dealing with international students for years. It is around the 9th, 10th year of having a growing number of international students. We are very proud of being an international university. Uh, in Hungary, a university is called an international university if we have at least 10% of our enrolled students from abroad. Uh, university page has around approximately 20 plus thousand students, and out of the 20 plus uh, thousand students, 5,800 is from abroad. So we are a really, really international university. Of course, uh, important things always comes after the but, uh, in brackets. Uh, most of the foreign students are located at the medical school, where we have more foreign students than Hungarian schools. At our faculty, the Faculty of Sciences, it is around 15 to 16 percent right at the moment. So we have an increasing number. Um, the intention of the faculty is to not only to attract the students here to our programs, but offering you um, a valid and exchangeable internationally reputed program, degree and diploma. One side is ours, I mean to offer this program, the other side belongs to you, I mean to follow the rules, go to have the classes, collect the credits and one more responsibility that is directly yours. You have to ask if you are in trouble, if you are uh, facing difficulties, if you are having questions which are uncertain, uh, interesting, uh, challenging, unknown, whatever, ask. And we would be happy to assist you or help you. Ask, if we can help you, we will help you. Um, the other thing is that um, surely you will have some homesickness. Uh, I had a time, a period in my life when I worked abroad uh, in another continent, in another culture, I did have a, a homesick, a really strong one. This is summer, this is the end of summer now, but as a geographer I can tell you that we have four seasons, uh, four seasons, uh, 
so we will have a fall and autumn with rainy days, uh, less and less sunshine, more and more classes, more and more exams, more and more practices. So you have to concentrate what happens now. It is not true for the entire acad academic year. Uh, plan your future. Um, we plan to help you a lot. Here are my colleagues who will tell you uh, in details, but personally I'm also involved in your so-called assimilation process, helping your assimilation. Uh, every Tuesday morning at 8, there is a class called An Insight into Hungary. That course is my course, so I guess some of you opted, uh, some uh, can opt later on to get that course. Of course, that is a course, so for credit, you have to sit for an examination at the end, but I guess there will be lots of information which will be or which might be useful for you during your studies here. Um, enjoy your stay here. Uh, use all the benefits what you can and ask if we can help you. Uh, welcome again, and I pass the floor on to my colleagues. Uh, they will tell all the uh, important information to you instead of me. Thank you. Thank you for your welcome speech, Mr. Dean. Have a nice day. Okay. So, for the next part of the orientation day, I will ask Raymond to present the student union who are not else than the representatives of students. So they are students for students. So Raymond, the floor is yours. And please pay attention to what Raymond will say as well because these are those of your fellow students who, who are mainly and mostly Hungarian, but they also have international students among their ranks. And this is also for you. They can help you in learning. They can help you in representing your problems and your issues. And Raymond, I will not steal more of your time. The floor is yours. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Raymond. I am here to represent the local student government. Uh, as my uh, well-known college said, we are here to uh, help you for your, uh, like when you are studying here, we are here for you to help. Uh, as he said, the Stivar government is existing uh, to in the university. We, ha we are a grassroots organization uh, when we have all of the faculties have one self government and we have one main organization which called the EHEC and uh, we are the one who are uh, mainly represent you here so uh, the student government which has been consent with the student representation as I said uh, what we are doing here basically when you have some problems uh, with your teachers or with your classes. Uh, you have to uh, attend two classes in one time. You have to come to your office, which is, uh, if you are coming from the main entrance, you have to take, take a left turn and you will see uh, the office with the glass door. Uh, so if you have some problem with your classes or uh, you think that uh, you have some problem with your teacher, you have to come to us and we will solve the problem, hopefully. So, and what we are doing uh, beside of this, we are representing the students in a lot of committees. So when you would go to your, uh, to the, uh, to the registrar's office, we are the one who could help you. How would you fill all the forms? Uh, what we are doing, what else? Uh, we are keeping touch with you and we are organizing the events which is really important because it makes more colorful your student life and what kind of events do we have all the parties in each Tuesday it is really really good and if you are coming there you could easily mix with the Hungarians 
And what else? We are making uh, wine tasting events, uh, board nights, game, bo game nights, uh, gamer championships, um, cinemas, and so on. And uh, we are doing uh, go-kart racing. And uh, we are also organizing the freshman camps and the freshman ball, which is really recommended for you to participate because uh, it is an event to, to dress really fine and, and get drunk. So it's, it's a really nice thing. And we are also uh, organizing, as I said, the them thematical parties. It is always uh, about or surrounding to the thematical, thematic, which, is, which could be uh, a retro party or a white color party, and also the semester openers. And let me grab the chance to invite all of you to the pub crawl, which is taking the place tomorrow at 7. So it's a really good opportunity to meet with your 7 p.m., thank you, with your comrades uh, from, from the Hungarians. And what the further options that we are presenting you, it's uh, discount theater, as I mentioned, discount cinemas, unique sweaters, uh, the things that you can see in the, in the right picture, and office services. So if you want to copy or print, uh, we can easily do that for you. So this is who we are, and thank you for your attention. And the other thing that I have, had to, have to mention, we have another organization here, which called the Student Hub. It is in, when you are coming uh, from, <laughs> it's okay, good morning. From the main entrance, you have to turn a right, and you will see a huge map from Europe. That is the Student Hub. And uh, that organization is made them for you to make all, all your life and integration here, it's more easier. So they will organize a lot of programs dedicated for you. So thank you for your attention. <laughs> here are our contacts, if you wanna contact with us. Okay, thank you, Raymond, for your presentation. So don't, don't forget that alongside office services and alongside supporting you in uh, your issues in studying and such. The student union is there also for you to help you interact with your Hungarian fellow students to participate in good parties, good events. These are awesome events. So if you wish to meet your fellow students outside school activities, then don't forget to check the advertisements of the TTK student union, okay? So, for the next part of the orientation day, uh, I will ask my colleague, Maria Maksud, who will hold uh, a special short presentation, plug it in, a special short presentation dedicated to how to get accustomed to the university life and the life here in Hungary. As she was an international student of the University of Pécs, she came with Stipendium Hungaricum. She came and learned, she graduated in Recreation MSc, so she knows, may, so she maybe knows all the troubles and all the hard feelings that you might have when you start your period of getting accustomed to pitch. So Mariam, the floor is yours. Thank you, Roland, for such a nice introduction. So. Uh, my name is Mariam and I'm originally from Pakistan and I was in the same shoes as l like you guys like two years back and I went through all the troubles and it was a really tough period for me because at that time the country was in a lockdown and I was not in a personal contact with my mentor. So I had to do all the struggles myself so this is why I think it's a really good position for me to address you guys today because I can really empathize, empathize with you guys and I can relate what happened when you just arrive to a new country where English is not the main communication language and you have a lot of things to struggle with. So starting with this, uh, my presentation is how you can adjust. So let's start with the question which already I think you guys played this role, I think on the weekend maybe, most of you guys arrived on the weekend. So how did you feel, like what was the most important thing you needed when you arrived in Hungary? That's a question to you guys. 
Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's you're so lucky then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any uh huh? Any other apart from the travel guidance? There are no wrong answers. Don't yeah. Uh, I just want it to be an interactive session because I really don't like reading the slides. So, <laughs> yeah, and this is for you. You were so interacted. <laughs> so any other answers are more than appreciated or no? Actually, one mm -hmm. Sorry? Oh, yeah, I remember my friend, uh, the dorm mate, when she checked in, she couldn't connect to the internet. And she was really worried because how will she inform her parents? But the good thing is that we all guided her that she can connect to the Edurom, and it worked out. So did it work out for you in the end? Did it work out, the Wi-Fi? Were you able? Oh, uh, OK. Mm -hmm. So internet connection, travel, uh, for me, another thing was that uh, I didn't know anything about Hungarian. And some people at the airport couldn't understand me. I don't know if you guys went through the same, but this was a trouble for me. Yes, come in. You're just 30 minutes late. It's OK. OK. Um, OK, so this is the W uh, adjustment curve when you come to a new country. So the first period is honeymoon, because it's really an exciting period, like you get married to a new country. I'm sure you guys are all in the honeymoon stage right now. Is it true or someone is already homesick? <laughs> so it's the honeymoon period, like going to the city center, going to Arcad, just independence. Yeah, I can relate. No, they, they're enjoying the honeymoon with our university right now. Oh. <laughs> OK, then comes the severe part, the culture shock. And for me, it was the time when I went to the immigration office, and I had to process all these documents for the student permit. So this was a bit of a culture shock. But after that stage, you go through the recovery phase, because you tackle all these difficulties. And then you try to adjust with the country. We have so many courses. Maybe you will learn some Hungarian words, like me. I, I can just speak very little Hungarian, although my husband is Hungarian. But still, it's such a tough language for me. I'm sorry, he's Hungarian, by the way. <laughs> but Hungarian so. Is the language of the devil. I know. Yeah, it's the fifth most toughest language on earth. So, yeah. But still, I'm proud. I, I learned some things. OK, then comes the disengagement. Again, you are on the path of uh, being a little away from your studies and you try to be more social. So there might be a high period where there will be a little bit of honeymoon feelings again. Maybe someone finds a new life partner like I did. <laughs> so that was me. Then euphoria and then again re-entry shock. This comes when maybe most of you will go back to your country to serve. You get good jobs there. And when you go to your own country, because you were living here for two, three, or maybe even more years, you might feel a bit weird going into your own country because you got adjusted to this, this culture, this environment. So maybe uh, I can say something that uh, if I go back to my home country now, because my country is a bit polluted than Hungary, it, it, it would be a bit of a shock for me again. And then again, the readjustment, if you try to settle there, or even if you don't get, go back to your home country, you try to start a new job, you move to another country, so that whole phase starts again. So lucky you guys are still in the honeymoon phase, but we will try our best that you stay in the honeymoon phase. But it's OK. This curve is like coming from a psychological study, so it's normal. All of us went through this. All of us felt it. I, I can relate. I went through it. But the most important thing is that you, you should uh, adjust. You should know this. It's normal. And seek help when you need it. So how can you adapt to student life? Uh, a few questions. Maybe. What has surprised you so far? Uh, one or two uh, answers would be enough. So maybe raise your hands. Yes? Yeah, because they don't have it in English. Maybe in sometimes in German they have it. Uh, can you give it to her? Uh, OK, what has been unexpected or surprising? It's somewhat similar. So what was really? New? Anyone? 
Ya. Mhm. And maybe for some people who are coming like I came from Asia like a uh, and the food difference was a bit of a shock for me. So maybe if you guys felt that, but um, <laughs> that was a culture shock for me in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and what has worried or excited you? Yes, go ahead. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You like the city center, you mean? Uh huh. It's uh huh. It's Instagramable, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what feels familiar? Maybe this might be a bit tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Feels familiar? Yeah, uh huh. Yes. Sorry, what? Holy? Oh, cars. Oh, for me, it was again a shock because in Pakistan we drive on the. Uh, in Hungary, it's on the left side, right? The yeah. driving seat. Yeah. We drive yeah. And for us, it's alternate. So again, it wasn't the main thing. Uh, can you pass this yeah, to him? OK, that was quite good to know. So that's it. Uh, the best thing is when you start uh, realizing that there are similarities and differences in the Hungarian culture. And that's the point when you are like informed uh, students, informed citizens, and residents. And you can make out everything, whatever challenge comes in your life. Okay, ways in which you can help yourself. So this is my presentation. This is how I help myself. Uh, when I was coming, my mom gifted me this teddy. And whenever I travel anywhere, by the way, this picture is from Croatia. It's a very beautiful city, Osek, and it's really close to Page. So whenever I go anywhere, I take this teddy because it's like a memory, and that's how I <laughs> went through the homesickness. Sorry? Yes, 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 yeah. So uh, you can help yourself by recognizing what you feel is normal. Like I said, there will be times of ups and downs. It's perfectly normal. And you have to stay connected with friends and your family and even make new friends. This orientation was not just uh, like overwhelming you with the administrative procedures, but also to provide you an opportunity to talk with other people and to acquaint yourselves with like different cultures, different people. And uh, you can also have reminders like I did. My mom gave me such a beautiful teddy. You can have something similar, maybe pictures, photo al albums, sorry, <laughs> whatever. And then, uh, again, I s said this, you need to make friends with internationals. And also, there are a number of international food stores. So if you're missing your home cuisine, you can always hit up those stores. And they're easy to go through because they're in the city center already. And you can make your own delicacies or whatever. So the main point is you don't have to suffer in silence because you are coming to a community. So we, we won't appreciate that you just, there is something going on in your life and you don't tell us. So we have a lot of uh, like professional supports for students and uh, you can contact them. I'm going to show you. The first one is Stipendium Hungarica Mentor Network. Those who are Stipendium students, uh, can I have a uh, count. Okay, you guys are already aware of this. Maybe you are in contact with your mentors, but this is not only limited to the um, like the stipendium students. Even fee-paying ones, if they need any help, they can reach out to my colleague uh, Mercedes, and she's really helpful. She's gonna appoint a special mentor, maybe from your own department, who can help you with anything. Okay, so maybe you can take a note of this. Again, if you are having a challenging time and you can't focus on your studies or there's something difficult going in your life, you can reach out to the counseling. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, my brother had a stroke and I was uh, having my exams at that time. So during that time, I couldn't leave for my home country and that time period was a really depressive one for me. 
But thanks to the counseling department, they really helped me. They, they are here to talk to you and to provide you alternatives. So reach out to them, guys, and it's totally free. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. So thank you and wishing you all the best. And if you have any questions, just go ahead. No questions? Okay. Yes, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're not a stipendium student? Not a stipendium student? Okay, okay, just write it. Thank you, Mariam, for, the, for this really insightful and interactive presentation of yours. Mm. Now, now I, I, I myself will do the informative part. I know that this might be a bit boring and such, but this will contain really, really important information during your studies in Hungary, so I can only advise you to take notes, okay? And, uh, if you did not manage to write down an email address, for example, that is contained on the PPT or, or a website, then feel free to interrupt me, okay? Raise your hand and, and say. Okay, so as the title also suggests, uh, this presentation will be a practical and study-related information for the 2022 and 2023 academic year. So you start your studies in this academic year, you applied for this. At first, first things first, we all love this study system. No, actually we do not love this study system, which is called Neptune. Sometimes it gets horrible, but uh, this is the system that you will definitely need uh, for your registration and also to take up your courses. Some of you might have already met the Neptune and some of you might already have a Neptune account as well. But, uh, but for the questions related to online Neptune enrollment and Neptune registration and taking up courses uh, can be covered tomorrow when my colleague from the registrar's office will help you in a computer room to register and register for courses as well and activate your semester. So if you haven't done it already, then you can do it with the help of us tomorrow, okay? So the online enrollment goes as uh, you receive, you will receive, or you have already received a Neptune ID, and then you write it in, use your password, and you log in. At the website, this, uh, which is provided at the second point, you can find a step-by-step -step guide about how to enroll in Neptune, how to activate your semester, and how to take up your courses. And also, you can, uh, so, and, and the login can be done by that website. So, uh, the enrollment and the activation passivation period is between the 23rd of August and the 6th of September. But uh, if you activate your semester if, or if you take up courses later, that is not, not, a big, not a big problem. But please, as soon as possible, please enroll in Neptune, activate your semester, and start to take up courses. Okay? So keep in mind what are the deadlines. Uh, also, here there is a website for the course and subject registration guide that shows how to uh, how to take up uh, courses, how to take up subjects, and if I remember well, uh, if I remember well, 
these also show how to differentiate between compulsory subjects and not compulsory and facultative uh, subjects, okay? Uh, the course registration, taking up and dropping courses in Neptune lasts until the 10th of uh, September. And as I said, the second orientation day, which will take place tomorrow, is about the online enrollment customer service. So if you will have any questions regarding this matter, please meet me at the same place at the same time, like 10 o'clock at the main entrance at the arch, and we will go together, and my colleague from the registrar's office will help you in these matters, okay? And then, after you enrolled, you will definitely need, for your studies, a student status certificate. This document, as its name suggests, certifies that you belong to us. You belong to our university, and you have officially started your studies at the University of Page. So this is the document which signals that you are a student, actually. At first, you have to finalize your enrollment to the Neptune registration system, the ne Neptune Integrated Study System. And then, inside the Neptune, when you have your account activated and when you see where to take up courses and when you see your, actually your account's website, you have to register and update your personal data in Neptune. Uh, update your personal data and be specifically accurate. That is really important, to designate your personal data in Neptune as it is on your, for example, on your passport on, or on your personal identification card. Write your name, your mother's maiden name, and also your permanent address, etc., and so on and so forth. Uh, and then, Neptune has got an English version. Neptune uh, has got a like a, an English version of the website and the, st and the system itself, but if you do not see the English uh, version for everything and for every document, you have to follow the steps indicated on the third point of this slide. So you log into Neptune with your ID and with your pass password, then you go to the following menu points. Search for administration, then, the in, inside the administration menu point, you can find request, and then in the request, choose this Hungarian uh, phrase, if you do not see an English version for that, jogviszony uh, igazolás kérelem. This means to uh, inquire student status certificate. So this is what it means in Hungary, jogviszony igazolás kérelem. You select it with the plus sign, and then, uh, and then you hand in this request. This, this inquiry or this request is received by the registrar's office through the Neptune Integrated Study System. They see that you posted an inquiry in Neptune that you wish to have a student status certificate. They will check it and they will print it. Also, if you find difficulty in requesting a student status certificate through Neptune, you can write an email to this email address, which is contained here, ttkto at gamma.ttk.pte.hu. If you write an email there, it's important to say your name, say who, uh, I mean, indicate in the email who you are, Actually, write your name, your Neptune code, and also write down that you wish to inquire a student status certificate, okay? So if you find any difficulty in requesting a student status certificate in Neptune, then you can write an email to this address and you can inquire a student status certificate there as well. And the colleagues will help you. Uh, also, the, the website, which is indicated here. It also contains a guide, which I told you beforehand, how to inquire a student status certificate. So, what the student certificate is good for? 
the student status certificate is indisposable, so it's really, really important to get your residence permit application accepted by the immigration office. It is required of them. Also, if you wish to have a student ID card by which you can, uh, by which you can enjoy discounts like at buses, museums, theaters, and such, so student status certificate is also uh, important for student ID application. It is important for this TAJ or toy card application and the toy card, I will talk about it later, it is important for you for health insurance and for the health services and doctor services. And also this certificate is needed to open a bank account in Hungary if you wish for one. Okay, so student status certificate is really important. Next. The immigration office things. I know these are quite complicated issues and I know that sometimes immigration office makes life for you quite complicated. Welcome, take a seat. So how to apply for a residence permit? How to apply for uh, being allowed to stay in Hungary. People who came from outside Europe, outside the European Union, sorry. So people who came from outside the European Union, these citizens, so I think most of you, has to check in at the National Directorate, the General for Aliens Policy, within 30 days after your arrival in Hungary. So you have to check in at the National Directorate and at the website which is shown there, you can book an appointment at the immigration office and you must book an appointment, otherwise you may have to suffer in long queues with a long waiting time. So it is really, really important to book an appointment at that kind of website. And also, uh, one of the next slides will contain the address of the National Directorate here in Pitch, where you have to check in. In order to apply for a residence permit, you will need the following documents. You need your valid passport, and for European Union citizens, you need your national personal identification card. You will need one passport size photo of you. You need a data sheet from their website, the website which is contained here. So that, that website contains a data sheet which is named residence permit for the purpose of studies. Uh, like the immigration office gives this document, so you can fill it there as well. But it's okay and good if you have it downloaded and printed and you fill it beforehand. And uh, another thing I would like to add here, for fee-paying students, you also need to carry your bank statement uh, showing that you have enough funds to cover your living costs before you go to the immigration office. So that should be a supplementary document as well. Thank you for your clarification, Mariam. Yes, so this data sheet, uh, you can download it and fill it from the website, but if you forget it or if you do not have it with you at the office, don't worry because they can give you this data sheet as well. Also, if you are a stipendium or a, any scholarship student, you need the letter of award. If you are a stipendium or a diaspora scholarship student, you would need your letter of award issued to you from Tempest Public Foundation, which shows that you are awarded the scholarship. And also, if, if you are a student uh, who came with the scholarship for, for uh, Christian young people, uh, in short, SCYP, then you have to bring the letter of award from Hungary Helps Foundation. You received, uh, you scholarship students received these uh, documents through your Dream Apply application. And also, as I said before, 
for the residence permit, you need your student status certificate, which is issued by the registrar's office. And also, you would need the letter of acceptance that you received during the admission procedure. You had to show this to the embassies as well, this acceptance or admission letters. And if you live in a dormitory, for the residence permit, you will definitely need your dormitory contract, which shows that you can live in your dormitory, actually. What else would it show? Or if you live in a rented flat, so you rent a flat or rent an apartment or rent a room, you would, n you would need a copy of the ownership certificate from your landlord and also an accommodation report form. So these are the necessary documents for the immigration office things. And with these documents, you can apply for a residence permit for Hungary for study related issues. Yeah? The accommodation report form, uh, you first have to find the blank, blank version and get it from the immigration office. Then you get that and fill it and then get it signed and stamped from the dormitory manager or if you're living in an apartment, get it signed from your landowner. And then uh, the signed version has to be submitted for the residence permit application. So the first point of start is that you get the blank document. It's like a white card paper certificate and get it filled and signed and stamped because it should be valid and it should have all the signatures and stamp before it can be accepted for the residence permit. Okay, th thank you for adding it. Yes, yeah, so uh, about the last uh, document, uh, we talked about the last document. So at first when you go to the immigration office, you might not have this kind of dormitory contract but you have to inquire for a blank sheet of dormitory contract. Then you go home or you go to the, your dormitory, have it signed and stamped by the, uh, by the correct authorities in the dormitory. Or if you rent a flat, you get it signed by your landlord and go back to the immigration office and hand in the document. I know it's really, really complicated, but you only have to do this once during your studies so, but you definitely have to do this, sadly, because this is the law of Hungary. And where is the immigration office? At the top, you see the address of the immigration office, page Chend Utsa or Chend Street 3. The opening hours, you see, uh, Wednesday it is closed, but also if you Google this address, page Chend Utsa 3, or if you Google immigration office page, you can see the refreshed opening hours. Uh, but as I said in one of the first slides, it is important to book an appointment preliminarily if you wish to go to get a residence permit. Uh, and also, if you move to a new address, inside Hungary. So for example, you move out from a dormitory and you move into a rented flat or if you wish to buy a flat and if you want to move, you need to inform the immigration office every time if you move to a new address in Hungary. That is really important. And this, uh, this form, this sheet, is from the international.pt.hu. You can also find it uh, at that website, international.pt.hu. Uh, you can find this guide there with step by step. Also, so it includes the same things as I mentioned, booking an appointment, residence permit inquiry, and also the necessary documents, okay? So, next step, you successfully handled the immigration office matters and you finally received your residence permit. Really good thing, because it means that you will not be sent, you will not be sent back to your home country. But, after you received your residence permit, you must bring it to the registrar's office. 
you got your residence permit, there will be a number on it, an official number like the one which is contained on your passport, for example. It will have a number, but you should bring this whole residence permit to, re to the registrar's office and ask the registrar responsible for your studies to register the number of the residence permit into the Neptune. It is really important. So whenever you receive this paper, whenever you fill all the documents and the immigration office gives you your residence permit, check the number on it, bring it to the registrar's office and ask your administrator to register the number of your residence permit to Neptune. Is it understandable so far? Yes. Okay. Sorry if I speak a bit too slow or sorry if I'm boring, but it is really important for you. Yes? Uh, if you already have a residence permit, and if it's uh, not registered into Neptune, then go to your administrator and ask them if it is registered already, and if not, and if it is not registered, then ask them to register the number for you. Okay? Yes? Uh, yeah, the NEK yeah, N -E number, I will speak about it later. It is related to your student ID card. It will be related to the student ID card. Okay. And he, here is student ID card. So immigration office matters and, Im and residence permit matters are over. Student ID card is the next important point. What is it good for? Your student ID card gives you a discount at public transport. And also, if you show this student card at the campus's sport facilities, like the swimming pool or the gym, of the faculty, you can use it for free. No free public transport, don't mix the two. For public transport, you just get a discount, okay? Uh, but the campus sport facilities are free to use if you have the student ID card. How to apply, how to get a student ID card? At first, check all your personal data in Neptune if everything is correct, if any modification is needed, then inform your administrator. Check the personal data, and then go to the Office of Records, or we call it officially Government Office. The address of the Government Offices is Kossuth Square 13, or Kossuth Ter 13, or Santo Kovács János Street 1. Go to either office. You don't have to go to both of the offices, just choose one. Go there and, and then inquire that you wish to have a student card, student ID card. At these offices, please submit only proper data uh, as they appear in your official documents, like as they appear in your passport. It is really important because the Educational Authority of Hungary compares the application data with the database of the National Address Registry System. So they check it. They check if your personal data is valid. And if there is anything which is modified or which is different for, from what you gave, then you might not get a student ID card. So it is really, really important to submit only proper data as they appear, as they appear in your official documents. And also, the Educational Authority compares the students' Neptune data and the NEK document data as well. In order, to require, in order to request a student ID card, you also have to bring some necessary documents, which are your passport and the student status certificate. Let's just repeat. From where you can get your student status certificate? How can you get it? Did you pay attention? 
Yep. No, the, the registrar's office is the one where you can get your student status certificate. You either inquire one in Neptune or you write an email to the registrar's office and inquire a student status certificate. Okay? So these are the two documents which are necessary to inquire a student ID card. Uh, in the office, an official photo will be taken and you must provide your signature and then you will get this NEK sheet. Uh, NEK is an abbreviation for a Hungarian term, uh, Nemzeti Egységes Kártya Rendszer, National United uh, Document System. So uh, you get an NEK data sheet, which is filled in by the government. It is filled by the government based on what data you provided them. Okay, and on this NEK data sheet, you will receive the 16 character identification numbers. So it's 16 letters and numbers. It's a mingle of letters and numbers. And you will get an NEK number in the upper right corner of this NEK data sheet. Okay, so whenever you brought your documents, whenever the photo is ready, and you provided your signature, you will get not the student ID card just yet, but you will get this NEK data sheet with the NEK number at the upper right corner of the document. And what to, and what to do with this data sheet? When you received your NEK data sheet from the government office, you see the menus here. Inside Neptune, you choose, again, Administration menu, then Student Card Request menu point, and then after three or four days, handling of the inquiry takes three or four working days, the Registrar's Office can provide you a temporary student card certificate. It is not your permanent student ID card, keep in mind, but a temporary one. It is valid for 60 days, but with this temporary student card, you can use discounted public transport and also the gym and the f uh, sports facilities for free because this temporary student card certificate shows that you handed in the inquiry successfully, you brought all the documents, and your student ID is in the process of making. So until you receive your permanent student ID card, you can use this temporary student card certificate, which is valid for 60 days for public transport and sport facilities. And whenever you receive your permanent student ID card, you win, will not need this temporary one, okay? This plastic student ID card takes like 60 days to be produced after being ordered, and the educational authority will post the student cards to the registrar's office, and the administrator at the registrar's office will send you an email that Dear student, your student ID card is ready. You can pick it up at the registrar's office here and then with the time slot. Okay? Uh, yes? Uh, because you won't be having the plastic card ready like in pretty soon. So you should always carry your temporary card with you, especially when you're traveling on the bus. Because sometimes uh, the inspectors, the bus inspectors, they check. And if you don't have that temporary certificate, which is like a paper sheet, uh, they can charge you or fine you. I was fined twice because I wasn't carrying the document, so I really hate them. So I want you to always carry the document. Always carry your passport and this kind of document because it's really important. Okay? And also, uh, having this temporary student card certificate and also having a student card does not mean that you can use public transport for free. It just means that when you buy a monthly pass uh, at the bus company, 
or if you wish to buy a yearly pass, you can do it with a discount. So you still have to buy like tickets or a monthly pass or a yearly pass. But if you bought it with a discount and you do not have a document with you which shows that you are eligible for a discount, then the inspectors can fine you. Because it is illegal to travel with a discounted uh, monthly pass or yearly pass if you do not have a document to prove that you are a student, actually. Okay? Uh, and this is also, uh, this is also like a, a sheet. Uh, this is also a sheet coming from the international website of the University of Pech. So, in summary, go to the government office, provide your personal data exactly as it is written on your passport, F pick up your temporary student card, and then when your permanent student card is ready, you can pick it up. Right? We're gone. This, uh, uh, only this NEK data sheet is needed, which you receive at... Yes, the passport and the student status certificate is all, all the necessary documents that are needed. Any other? Any other questions related to student status certificate or student card? Sorry. Then let's go further on. The registrar's office. third country international students, like third country nationals, you need the contract and the address card. The address card is, it's not like a document, it's like a certificate. So one part of it has to be signed and stamped by the dorm manager. So you need the contract, which you already have, but you need the card as well. And these two things you're gonna submit at the immigration office, and then they're gonna like, uh, like register you in the system that your address, present address is in the dorm. You go to the immigration office, book an appointment, and just collect it from there. It's it's on the uh, table there. Yeah, like SIM card there, right? It's a white colored one, yes? Sorry? The, the residence permit is an entirely different thing. That's for, yeah? Yes, first you need the address card because you cannot have a residence permit in Hungary if you don't have an address in Hungary. So first thing is you need the address card. You get it done, signed by the dorm manager, you go back to the immigration office, they're gonna stamp you that, okay, we registered you in the system. The next part is you go for the residence permit. Okay, yes, any more questions related to this? You have? He, he has a very inquisitive uh, face, you know, as if he's scared. Yeah, I... Uh, yep. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, you... Yeah, and uh, actually, I know that uh, this presentation is long and tiresome, uh, despite that it con uh, contains very important information, but what would you say that we hold like a five minutes break now? Okay, and we can continue this uh, after five minutes. Okay, Le let's get get some rest and talk with each other, get get acquainted a bit, and le let's say that in in five minutes we will continue. Okay, this is for your sake.
Hát szerintem három negyed vagy fél körül végzünk. Aha. Jó, akkor szerintem pont akkor, amikor kell, uh, akkor gyerek ki oda és szólj, hogyha véget tettek, és akkor előtt jó, 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 jó. jó. Igazából annyi lehet kell, hogy csak az autóra is ennyi. Ne? Jó, jó, rendben, akkor majd szólok, hogyha végzünk. Jó, de hogyha gondolod, nem most tudom, átszakítod, azt ennyi. Jó. You can, you can open. Okay, I, I am continuing now. Okay. So hopefully most of you have returned. Uh, we should continue this orientation day presentation, so please pay attention. Let me call the attention now. Return to us, everybody. Okay. And yeah, I, I know, and, but as I said, fi five minutes, so, and, and we have a limited time frame, so I, I must continue my presentation, so sorry for that. So, uh, let's talk about some services for students now. This is an idea which was introduced by Ma Mariam here to include into this presentation that there is something called a campus legal aid clinic. Uh, this is a company which offers free counseling regarding law cases for students, for international students at the University of Pécs. Uh, if you live in a rented flat, if you live in an apartment, and if you got any problems regarding your contract with your landlord, tenancy, uh, anything, you can seek, uh, you can seek out uh, this uh, campus legal aid uh, clinic uh, service. Also, if you have any issues regarding immigration office that like your residence permit extension requests, like if you posted an inquiry that you wish to extend the validity of your residence permit, if you wish to extend the expiration date of your residence permit, and the immigration office refuses you, and you do not happen to know why it got refused, then you can seek out the campus legal aid clinic and they can help you find the reason that why di uh, did it get refused. And also, if you wish to stay in Hungary for a longer period of time, and if you are thinking about starting a company, uh, if you're thinking about s uh, starting a company and, and need any legal help with, with, the, with the starting steps, the first step stones, then also Campus Legal Aid Clinic can help you. So in summary, Campus Legal Aid Clinic offers counseling for free for international students regarding landlord and tenancy contract problems, residence permit extension refusal, law cases, and also if you wish to start a company in Hungary, then Campus Legal Aid Clinic is your office. And now, medical insurance. I will have uh, a slide specifically designated to stipendium and scholarship students and also a medical insurance for self-financed fee-paying students. 
for stipendium students. After you successfully received your residence permit, you have to visit the central registrar's office, not this registrar's office here at the Faculty of Sciences, but the central registrar's office and search on Google the abbreviation KTI and maybe put, it, put page behind it. So search for KTI's address, but I will provide the address of the KTI later. So if you are a stipendium, a scholarship student, and if you received your residence permit, visit the central registrar's office and say that you wish to apply for a Hungarian medical insurance card or toy card, okay? So uh, keep in mind this abbreviation as well. So toy, toy card uh, is what you have to apply for if you are a stipendium student. And usually it is Ms. Theresia Ban who deals with medical insurance for scholarship students, okay? So with, with the residence permit, visit the central registrar's office and apply for the toy card. The necessary documents, as you see there, you have to bring your passport, your valid residence permit, you have to uh, bring your address card or accommodation confirmation, either from the dormitory or from your, from your landlord, but if you have received your address card, you usually receive that one, you should bring that. And it, since you are a scholarship student, you have to bring your letter of award, your scholarship verification, in the case of Stipendium Hungaricum, the Stipendium Hungaricum letter of award. And also, also, you have to bring the student status certificate mentioned before. And this student status certificate uh, has to be kind of a fresh one. So uh, it has to be issued not more than 30 days prior to your application for a toy card. So this is for stipendium students. It takes approximately two to four weeks to issue your toy card. And when it is ready, you will be notified, not via email, but via Neptune. You will be notified via Neptune to visit, not this registrar's office here, but the central registrar's office. I will give the address later. To visit the central registrar's office again and pick up the toy card again. This is for scholarship students. For fee-paying, for self-financed fee-paying students, you can also apply for medical insurance. For international students of the University of Pécs, it is the Generali Providencia Studium, Accident and Health Insurance Company, who provides health and medical insurance for students at the University of Pécs. They offer cost reimbursement for medical cases. For 12 months, if you wish to inquire for a medical insurance lasting for 12 months, it costs approximately 75,000 forints yearly. And if you wish to have a medical insurance only for seven months as a fee-paying student, then it costs 40,000 forints, Hungarian forints. This insurance for the fee-paying students is available from the University of Pécs International Studies Center. The International Studies Center is in Domjanich Street. So this is the address of the International Studies Center where, from where fee-paying students can inquire the medical insurance. Pécs, Domjanich Utsa, Domjanich Street, 30. Search for the ground floor. And if you need further info from, uh, about medical insurance, then please contact Mr. Tomás Nádai at nadai.tamas 
at pte.hu. So as a fee-paying student, this is your opportunity to get medical insurance. For more info, you can read more about it under the link isc.pt.hu slash health insurance safety. Okay? So these health insurances, both the stipendium one, or both the scholarship one, and this fee-paying insurance, it states actually it is important for you that if you suffer any accident like a car accident, bike accident, or if you need anything, any medical service that you wish to have, then it costs you without insurance. But if you have insurance or if you have a tie card, if you're a scholarship student, then this cost uh, this money is provided by the state, the Hungarian state. If you do not have any insurance, then your medical things have to be financed by you. Okay? Okay? The general practitioner or GP, the doctor, in short. GP service. If you have your toy card or PPing students have your PTE insurance with you, then, then the GP, a doctor's service, is free. If you do not have a toy card or your PTE insurance, it costs like 2,500 forints. You have to pay for it. So, uh, but there is another opportunity. It is not really popular among PTE students. But if you have a health insurance by a, c a company not in contract with uh, PTE, uh, then you will have to pay on the spot. You will have to pay the fees, even if you have an insurance, if you have an insurance with a company not in contract with the PTE, you have to pay for the service. You receive your ambulant card and you receive an invoice. You will pay the invoice, but with the ambulant card and with your invoice, which you received at the GP or the hospital, you can post your inquiry at the company for reimbursement. But this is only the case when you have a health insurance with a company that, is, that was not mentioned previously. So a company that is not in contract with Page. Of course, if the GP cannot treat you on the spot, the GP may redirect you to a specialist for special treatment. But, of course, the GP can prescribe you the medications. And also, if you bring, so bring the prescription with you. If, you d if the GP says that your illness can be treated with this and this medication, this and this, uh, like, syrup or, or, or tablet or, or anything, just uh, you will receive a prescription from the doctor. You bring this prescription to the pharmacy or drugstore, any pharmacy and, or drugstore in page, and you can... You can buy this prescribed medication if you hand this prescription to the, uh, to the cashier at the pharmacy, okay? So the GP for international students. The GP's address is at Nyar Street 8, Pech Nyar Utsa 8, and the opening hours are the following, which you see there. There is a toll-free emergency telephone number, uh, toll-free from any phone, which is 112. But be mindful. Always call this number if there is a really great emergency. If you wish to call the police, if you wish to call the firefighters, or if you wish to call for an ambulance car because somebody near you or somebody or, or you yourself feel really, really unwell and you feel that you need urgent treatment 
then call this 112. But be mindful that this is only for emergencies, real emergencies. They get lots and lots of calls, fro even from Hungarians, which are really not related to emergencies. So please be mindful of that. With this 112, you can reach the police, the firefighters, and also hospital or an ambulance car. Okay? Now, how to open a bank account? Many shops in Hungary, uh, mainly the supermarkets, they accept uh, payment by euros, but our currency is Hungarian forint, as you might have experienced so far. Forint is, e with the forint, it's easier to manage finances in Hungary via a bank account. Uh, the university is in partnership with the National Bank of Hungary, OTP, OTP Bank, and OTP Bank has got a branch office in Rakóczi Street 1. So Rakóczi Street 1 is the one you see there. And, uh, but any other bank can be used as well, but OTP is used to have international student uh, clients or international students who wish to inquire to open a bank account, okay? So OTP, the, the employees of OTP are quite experienced with international students wishing to open a bank account in Hungary. And for this, also always register and or change all of your new or updated data in Neptune. So for example, if you manage to open a bank account in Hungary, for example in OTP, Neptune also needs your bank account number because with your bank account number they can transfer scholarship uh, fees to you and also with this bank account number you can also pay any payment obligations you have through Neptune which is related to your studies, okay? So the, this is about opening a bank account. Yes? Yeah, they for some countries it's mandatory to have a residence permit before you open an account. But for some they don't need it and you can open it like without that as well. So you have to inquire from the branch what are the obligations for you to open an account there. Okay? Yes? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so that's needed. But are you a scholarship uh, student? Maybe th uh, they won't be able to transfer in the uh, international account because they need a Hungarian local account for transferring the money. But for this, uh, I'm not really sure, but you should confirm it. But that's what I know. They need the Hungarian account for the transfers. Yes? Uh, resid you'll get a temporary certificate. Some, some branches are like cool with that. They will open on that. But you're from India, I believe, right? Bangladesh. Like I was from Pakistan and my uh, roommate was from Indonesia. For the Indonesian, they opened it without the residence permit. But for me, they needed the residence permit. So that's why they have these categories. Uh, so you have to inquire from them. No, it won't work. Maybe you're lucky it might work because I'm, it didn't work in my case. And it gets uh, like after the, uh, you submit the application, the card comes to you in a maximum of around 30 days. For the student permit, it takes around 30 days for the card to arrive. Yeah, for like uh, you have any other measure at some other place, you can use that. Because that means that you are a legal resident and you don't still have the card part yet because it takes time. Any other question? Yes? Yeah, uh, for SIM card, yeah, it, like it's okay even if you just have the uh, like uh, dormitory contract, it was fine. And the letter of award, 
I opened with the uh, Telenor, and for me, just the address card was needed and the passport. All good? Okay. Can I continue? Okay. So, next part is student counseling. Mariam already mentioned this, but I think even if I repeat, it is still useful. Uh, so, the student counseling's par primary objective is to, to help you handle any psychological issues with psychological counseling. This service is free of charge and it guarantees complete discretion. So if you have any problems, you can rely on them and they will keep your personal data and everything confidential, okay? If you need them. For further information, there is counseling.pte.hu where you can get information about them. The registrar's office, the most important people for your studies. So whenever you are enrolled successfully into the PTE system, you have an Aptune account, and you also have, uh, uh, and you also wish to start, and you also successfully started your studies. From that moment, you will be not our responsibility, and you will not belong to our jurisdiction, the international office's jurisdiction, but the registrar's office jurisdiction, okay? So the, international, so the registrar's office administrators will handle all your inquiries regarding your active studies, regarding your active and passive semesters, Neptune-related issues, course registration issues, and, and everything like that. So we at the international office deal with admission, procedures, both for scholarship and fee-paying students, but the registrar's office is the one who deals with actively enrolled students, okay? So, physical training students, please write down the name of Ms. Zofia Dull, who is the responsible administrator for physical training students. Physics, BSc, MSc students, computer science BSc students and mathematics students, please write down the name of Petra Hoynal, Miss Petra Hoynal. She is the one responsible for you. Uh, biology BSc and MSc students, and also chemistry BSc and MSc students, write down the name of Miss Cornelia Vince. She is the one who deals with your cases. Geography, BSc and MSc, Earth Sciences, BSc students, write down the name of Miss Christina Elekes. She is the one for you. And PhD students, for example, Parisa here, Christina Nemet is the one who deals with you. The head of the registrar's office, uh, you don't need to contact him. He is our boss. He is Mr. Joet Heisenberger. And also, always keep in mind the opening hours of the front office, which is room A324. Uh, you, can, you can go there and personally handle cases, keeping in mind the opening hours and the opening dates of the registrar's office but also you can, write to, you can write an email uh, separately to your administrator specifically or to the email address I mentioned earlier, ttkto at gamma.ttk.pte.hu. But if you, if you search for the name of your administrator, for example, on Google or on the website of the Faculty of Sciences, you can find the email address of these administrators. So again, physical training, Zofia Dul, computer science, physics, Ms. Petra Hoynal, biology BSc, MSc, chemistry BSc and MSc, Cornelia Vince, geography and earth sciences, Ms. Christina Elekes, and PhD programs is Ms. Christina Nemeth. Understood? Did you manage to write down the names? Okay. They are the most important people for you. I'm uh, going to be submitting your matriculation card to these people, not to us. So, uh, like, keep a note of the timings when they are available. Again, 
all, all documents all documents related to your active studies, like the issues with the residence permit, the address card, or, or anything. If the steps include that you should bring it to the registrar's office, uh, like at the residence permit, we talked about it, that the number of the residence permit has to be registered by the registrar's office, then you should bring that card to one of these administrators, the one responsible for you. Uh, I, I will ask you la later, just let me finish. Uh, or the NEK data sheet, which is needed for your student ID card, please, uh, uh, please also have that kind of number and that kind of data sheet brought to the registrar's office and not ask the international office. Yes? Yeah. Okay. This is the registrar's office. Courses and registration. So the registration for and dropping courses in Neptune is going on continuously as the courses are announced. And also all courses and information about your respective programs are, con are contained in the curriculum. And this is the website which contains the curriculum. And now I am, I am revealing a big secret. Do not worry if you did not manage to write down everything, but in a bulk email addressed to all of you who participated either physically or online, you will receive this PPT. Okay? I did not say it in the beginning because then you would not pay attention to me. Please understand this. Uh, and also, uh, so in the curriculum, in the website, please watch out for all the prerequisites of subjects because later on in the later semesters uh, there are some uh, there are some subjects which require some other subjects to be completed watch out for parallel requisites you can find a guide to course registration and also you can find your timetable if you log into Neptune choose the studies menu point and choose class schedule and how to use a curriculum, for example. Uh, the website I provided in the previous slide, you see the ttk.pte.hu. For example, you can find a curriculum there like this. You can see the, the course title, the course type, and with the slash, you can find the type of an exam you have to take. So this is like a, a computer science curriculum. I don't know if it's uh, fresh or not fresh, but you can see the course name like lecture, seminar, and it says that it will be a practical exam. Uh, this says this call, it's, it means colloquium, that you will have a written type of exam at the end of the semester. Uh, it says how many hours per week you have to participate in. Also, you can see there the prerequisites. So. Uh, so there are some courses which have to be completed in order to sign up for some specific courses because some courses build up on others. And also you can see the instructor in charge uh, who is responsible for the education of that particular program. Yes? Yes, yes, that, that is, that is. And also there are some kind of parallel requisites. It means that you have to take, if you wish to sign up for a course which has a parallel requisite, it means that you have to sign up for that kind of parallel requisite uh, course as well, which means that you have to complete one course parallelly to the other that you wish to sign up for. So there are courses which should be completed together in one semester, this means that. And also, attending courses. So the semester officially starts today, the 5th of September, based on the academic uh, calendar. And uh, until the 15th of October, everybody should arrive and enroll. Uh, until the 15th of October, if that deadline has passed, then the enrollment becomes really, really, really problematic. Attending courses during the semester is obligatory, not only for your study, it is obligatory for your studies. You came here to learn, right? So 
it is obligatory. And also, always be aware that your absence could not be more than 30% of the classes. And if you, if you know preliminarily that you are going to miss a class like, for example, next week, and you know that you will definitely miss that class, you can write an email to the course instructor and inform him or her that Sorry, professor, I will miss uh, this class. Please accept my apology, and so on and so forth. And the professors will be, really will be really happy that you inform them preliminarily if you know that you're going to miss the uh, one class or two. But be mindful that your absence n must not be more than 30% of the classes. Otherwise, you cannot complete the course. OK, about the exams. About exams, yeah, if you sign up for courses, you will have the ability to sign up for exams. If you have any payment obligation, like uh, you have a dormitory free debt, or you did not pay the tuition fee yet, or anything, payment obligation exists, then you will be unable to take exams. So you have to pay all your obligations if you wish to take an exam of any subject. Uh, during an exam, at the start of an exam, identification is obligatory. Bring your ID card or your passport with you in order to start the exam because the professors check your identity to avoid, uh, to avoid students cheating with each other's personalities and such. The lecturer and teacher cannot test the student who has not registered for the examination and is not recorded on the examination sheet. So in the same way you register for courses, the, uh, similarly you, should, you must register to exams as well. Signing up for an exam. You can sign up for an exam date no later than 24 hours before the exam. The exam dates will be announced before the start of the exam period, of course. And the, in, and the course instructors will inform you when will be the exams. And you can sign up for an exam no later than 20 hours before the exam. And you have also the ability to cancel your exam registration if you wish to postpone it because you do not feel well prepared enough or anything. You can cancel your, your exam registration, but only 36 hours before the exam, so one and a half days before the actual exam date. If you miss these deadlines, no one is able to help you. Always keep in mind the deadlines. Can I go further? Okay. About exams, you have three chances to complete an exam and complete a subject in one semester. The second and third attempt is possible during the given semester, and all of these retake exams cost 2,500 forints. These retake exam fees must be paid via Neptune and must be paid before uh, registering for an exam, for a retake exam. There is, the, so, there is the equity exam, the dean's exam permit. You post an inquiry to the dean if you couldn't complete uh, a subject for the second and third attempt. And you post an inquiry to the dean, and he may grant exception and give you a fourth chance in the same semester. But be mindful that this equity exam is only one opportunity during your entire studies. You can only take this opportunity once, not once per year or once per semester, but once during your studies. Uh, to complete a subject or a course, you have six total chances. Three chances in one semester, but if you fail to complete the subject, you can retake the subject again in the next semester or the semester uh, in the next year, but you have six total chances to complete a subject or a course. So it means that three chances per semester and three other chances at another semester. And if you fail to complete uh, these like, so the total number of repeated retake exams and retake exams reaches five, five or six, then the student status is terminated. So uh, if you fail to complete a subject and you took all your six chances and you still failed, then your student status will be terminated. 
and also the number of exams. So as I said, the number of exams in different semesters are added together. So if you attempted to uh, complete a subject and you used up one exam opportunity in one semester, it means that you will still have only three chances in the next semester. Uh, and if you fail there, it means that you took four chances to complete the subject. If you retake a subject for the third time, you, ha you used four exam attempts, you have two more left. And if you fail, then the student status is terminated. Missing exams. Uh, and be mindful that uh, I, will, I, will finish, uh, I will finish soon, okay? <laughs> Missing exams. In case, in case of you successfully sign up for an exam, but if you don't go, bless you, if, in case you sign up for an exam and you don't go, your result can be two cases. One, the teacher says that you did not uh, attend, you did not appear, and it costs 2,000 forints. So if the student does not attend the, the examination they have registered for, and, fail, and the student fails to indicate and certify the cause of a non-attendance, like you fail to show a medical report, like if you fail to appear at the registered exam date due to medical, uh, medical things, and you do not, do not show this uh, certificate, then you have to pay 2,000 2, Hungarian forints for a mixed exam. But if you can justify your non-attendance so that you submit a request together with a verified reason indicating your absence, so for example, a medical test report, and uh, you submit the certificate within eight days to the registrar's office, then it can be cost-free, your non-attendance to an exam. As I said, so what happens if you fail a subject? If you fail a subject, it means that you got a grade one or an insufficient or a failed grade, or the note that cannot be assessed. You can take the course or subject up again in the next semester or in the semester when the course is announced again. Every second and further course take up costs 500 forints slash credits. So for example, if you fail a subject that, that would have awarded you two credits in the case of completion, but you fail to complete it, and you want to take it up next semester, it means that you have to pay 1,000 forints because it costs 500 forints per credit. Maximum price is 10,000. Okay, yeah, transcribing and payment of retake exam fee. Uh, you can find this guide in Neptune. I advise you to read it. This is at the Neptune's login page. It, at the English version. I talked about the central registrar's office who deal with, for example, medical insurance. All kinds of financial issues belong uh, to them. And uh, their customer service is available at the basement of Faculty of Law, Building Z. It is at Page, Dohain Street, 1 to 3, next to the cash desk. The, here, students can arrange their academic affairs Personally, they have also an email address. So for example, about the uh, Stipendium Hungarica Medical Insurance, this is the address that you have to go to, Dohain Street 13. And also, so the little bit sad, sad part, but you have to pay attention to these things. Your student status will be terminated. If you fail to collect at least 12 credits in the first and second semester together, not, not, not that? It's deleted. Ah, thank you. So, it, it, so the first, first part is deleted. For, for, don't pay attention to the first part. Uh, if, so your student status will be terminated if you have used all your six exam chances in one course unit. I talked about this preliminarily. It will be terminated. Hmm? This is also terminated. Mm. 
the first and the third point is deleted. Ah, yeah, so you have taken up a practice course more than three times, so it's terminated. From this semester. From this, from this semester. Okay, thank you. So the, the first and the third point here is not important for you. The second it is, if you have used all of your six exam chances in one course unit, which I have talked about preliminarily in one of the previous slides, so if you fail to complete it with six chances, then your student status will be over. Uh, you can passivate two semesters continuously. You cannot passivate the third semester in a row. So if you passivate your third semester as well, after two passive semesters, then your student status will be terminated again. And if you are a stipendium Hungaricum scholarship holder and you have not acquired at least 36 credits, in any last two active semesters, then your student status will be terminated. So scholarship holder students have to acquire at least 36 credits in two active semesters. Hmm? Yes? Yes? A 18 credits, I think. A 18 credits. Yes? Uh, no, it's uh, when you register in Neptune and, and, uh, the, um, and the Neptune and the system asks you to uh, give your consent if you would activate or passivate your semester at the beginning of the semester. So there can you decide if you wish to have an active semester when you actively learn or such, or if you would passivate, then you can passivate, that, but not more than three in a row. Okay. You can uh, find some information about the laws and regulations uh, in these kind of uh, websites, and also we will publish uh, sooner or later an official code of conduct uh, which will help you get accustomed to the regulations of Hungary and also how to live together with Hungarian students and how to behave to, uh, towards teachers and registers, office people and such. But as I said, you will receive this PPT in the end. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, the schedule uh, the schedule will be included in the, uh, on the website, on the official website of the uh, university, uh, I mean the Faculty of Sciences, the ttk.pt.hu. So you will receive a bulk email about, uh, about this PPT. I will try and post it with attachment and I will try to contact each and every one of you. And sorry if it took too long, but these were important informations, and if you have now any questions, then please say it, and then I will say the next program, okay? Uh, I received a few questions before I left from here. So it was about students who were already studying at some other faculty. They had a student card already. So they don't need to go through the any key procedure again. They can use the same card, but they need to get the new sticker of activation, okay? And any other questions which uh, I might ha yes? Uh, yes, so uh, both for fee paying and scholarship students, if they wish to retake an exam because they failed at the first opportunity, they have to pay the fees as well. And similarly, I think it's mandatory for the scholarship students to learn Hungarian. If you don't get the credits for Hungarian course, your scholarship would be de deducted by about 10,000 forints. So, yeah. yeah, that's important as well. Yeah, so uh, thank you for your attention and thank you for your patience of bearing with me in this extremely long presentation. But this was mandatory for us to make your life easier, to make our, our lives easier. Uh -huh.